Hi everyone, in today's video, we'll be looking at three common accessibility issues we'd normally find in a Bricks Mega Menu. So let's get right into it. Amber Hines, in her Accessibility Weekly Tips, talked about how to test for accessibility. And within the document, which I'll link to in the description below, she said that we use four different tests. The first being the automated tests, that is using some Chrome extensions like Wave Dev Tools and Axe Dev Tools and all the others. Then we go through a keyboard testing, followed by a screen reader testing, and finally a user testing. But I also like to incorporate some other tests before that, so I like to do a visual test. So basically, taking the website like someone who can see and use the mouse and the keyboard and has access to all the various tools for browsing the website, and then I just go through the website and try to pick out if there's any UI or UX design issue that might be confusing to a user before I go through all the rest of the tests. So we'll be using some of these tests on about four different Bricks websites, and I will show you some issues I found with those four websites. So now let's go straight to the first website. The first example website we'll be looking at is from the Bricks showcase page. So let's go ahead and open this up. The first test we'll be doing is the visual test. So we'll go ahead and look at it visually and then use our mouse to go through the page to see if we can easily identify items on the page. We'll also look for like color contrast issues. So now looking at the page, you can see that the logo is at the top center of the page and then it's clickable. Then we have the navigation at the top left of the page. And when we hover over them, it gives you this color change. Let me close this. So there's a color change when we hover over them. So now that we're done with the visual test, we'll go over to the next test, which is the keyboard testing. We'll skip the automated test for this example. So now let me try and use the keyboard to navigate through the entire website. So I'll go from the search bar and keep tabbing through. And immediately you notice that I'm somewhere on the page, but I have no idea where I am on the page. The only indication I can get is at the bottom left of the page, you see the link there. But other than that, there is no other indication on this page where I am. So I might be clicking on the wrong thing without knowing. So now I think I'm somewhere on the FAQ section. Let me press enter to see where I am. So I'm on the third FAQ. And let me try and go back with the shift tab. So you have to test with tab and then shift tab. So when I test with the shift tab, I noticed something strange that when I was tabbing through forward, I did not get to see any of these links. But when I'm tabbing backwards, I'm seeing the links. I don't know if that is intentional, but basically tabbing forward and tabbing backwards did completely different things. But yet, I have no idea where I'm on the page. I'm only just seeing things moving on the page, but I have no idea with any indication. And the reason for this problem is that a lot of us, we like to disable the focus outline on the page because we say it looks ugly. So we go over to our Bricks page. So let me go to the Bricks page. And then we go to Settings and our Team Styles. Then we go to somewhere like Typography. And we set the focus outline at the bottom to like none or something like that so that we want to avoid having any focus outline on our page but then that leads to alienating your keyboard users because the keyboard users need to see something visually on the page to know where they are on the page a screen reader user might be different he doesn't need those colors and changes but a keyboard only user needs something visual to understand where he is on the page you don't always have to remove the focus outline there are new properties we can use like the focus visible outline which i'll show you Right now, let's switch over to Firefox. And then I have it open here already from Kevin Geary. His website is amazing. So let me do the same thing. So we'll start with the visual test. So let's hover over the links. See, there's the hover states. So we know these are links typically at the top of your page. That's where you get your navigation links. So we can already identify that those are links. And then using the keyboard, so I'll press the search bar and then start tabbing through. You can see, now that I'm going through, I noticed something that with the previous website, I couldn't even see the skip to content and skip to main link. But with this one, at least I can see that that is another pass. And then the links, you can see all of the links. There is the 
outline around it. So that makes you know that this link, there is something around it, which is good. So that's a pass for me visually. But now I'll take you to an issue that I found on another website based on the same issue. They both use the same CSS to create that focus visible outline, but it acts differently. So now let me go back to Chrome and then I'll show you the Nicholas Ace website. As you can see from this website, let's do the same thing, the visual test. If you see there's visual indication to tell us that we are hovering over something. And then when we use the tab key for keyboard only users, you can see there's this color change as well with the square around it. That is the standard way. But watch what happens when I test it on Firefox. So now we'll go back to Firefox. And I think this is his website. Let me refresh the page. And we'll try the same thing. As you can see, hover. We still get that hover state. And let me try with the keyboard. Tab through. We get this, we get that. But then, nothing. We can't see the links anymore. And that's because, although both of them are using the same CSS, the problem is that with Chrome and with Firefox, they act differently. So with Chrome, the focus outline and the focus visible outline are taken as different. So the focus visible takes precedence over the focus outline. Whereas with Firefox and some other browsers, it takes them as being on the same level playing field. So let me show you what I mean. As you can see on this link, let me right click and inspect it. So here we are on the link. Let's go over to these hover options. And then we choose the focus visible outline. You can see it clearly shows that there's a focus visible outline. But then watch what happens when I activate the focus outline as well. It disappears. The reason being that both of them have the same specificity. So in Chrome, the focus visible takes precedence. But in Firefox, since they are the same, then it goes to the location on the style sheet. You can see the focus outline is taken in line. So that is basically it's on the same page. So that gives it precedence over the focus visible, which is on an external style sheet. So to avoid this problem, the two things we can do is we can either increase the specificity of the focus visible outline, or we can come to our focus outline. I got this trick from CSS tricks. All you have to do is now say when it is focus, but not focus visible, it should have this on set value. But when it is focus visible, they should take out this value. And then that fixes the problem. So let me uncheck this. And now we'll try again with the keyboard. Now you can see this focus outline even on the skip to content and every other link. So now we can clearly know where we are on the page. So that is the thing we need to do to fix that problem. So not only setting focus outline to none or on set or zero, we also have to make sure that the focus visible outline has a higher priority because some browsers take them differently. So mobile browsers do differently from the Firefox browsers and then from WebKit browsers, they also do things differently. So you have to make sure that you test on all different devices to be very sure that your website is accessible. So now that we're done with that, we'll move on to the next test. So let me close this. The second issue I found is with regards to mobile menus. So from this article, and behind says that all text should be able to be read if zoomed to 400% on a computer screen. So that's kind of like mimicking a mobile screen, but it's also ideal to test on a mobile phone as well. But watch what happens on this website when we zoom in to 400%, right? You can see the zoom level at the top right of your screen. So let me zoom in. So now we are, I think, on 400%. So now I'll use the visual test again. So let me click on the hamburger menu. And unfortunately, everything goes blank. And the reason for this, I believe, has to do with sticky menu. Because if you try to zoom out a little bit more, you get the menu back. But once you go past a certain level where this menu becomes bigger than the screen, it breaks. So basically, it breaks at this level. So I guess, like I'm behind this mention in one of our articles, I'll look for it and I'll link to it in the description. She says something about not using sticky menus because it breaks 
in the mobile menu. So let me go back. So now that's beside the point. That's a particular problem I found with this specific website. But now let's go to the second test, which is the keyboard test. And that's the problem that I normally see with a lot of the Bricks nav nestable websites. So let's close this and I'll use the keyboard again to navigate. And now we're on the hamburger menu. Let me press the enter key. We get to the mobile menu. And now let me press the tab key. And we are out of the menu again. That's where the main problem happens. And that is not his fault. That's how Bricks by default sets up the nav nestable menu. I'll show you the reason why. But the problem is that basically the button is below the actual menu. So when the focus moves from the button, it goes away from the menu items completely rather than going to the menu items within the mobile menu. Let me show you. So let's go back to my demo page. I think that's here. As you can see right now, this is the nav menu. It has some drop downs, but way at the bottom, that's how you get the mobile menu toggle. And that is wrong. The toggle should be before the actual menu. So let's move that up to the top before the menu items. And that's how we fix the problem. The toggle should be before the actual UL links within the menu structure. Otherwise, the focus doesn't go to the proper element. So once we do that, then that will solve that problem. And so that's the fix for the second problem. Let me save that. And then now let's go over to the final problem that I see with a lot of nav nestable menus. The last common accessibility issue I find with Bricks nav nestable menus is the drop down content. So for this test, we'll be using the Kevin Geary website and we'll be testing the drop down content. So this is where there's a drop down. Although there's no indication that there's a drop down, you might want to put that, but that is not a priority. But now that we have the drop down content, you see it works on hover. And then doing the keyboard test, we can tab through to it. See, we get the focus indication and pressing the space bar or the enter key opens the drop down content. So that is correct. And then we can tab into the content, which is perfect. But then when we now go to the next test, which is the screen reader test, that's when everything falls apart. So now let me turn on my screen reader. I'll be using NVDA for this test. So you can test it yourself at home. So you can use like VoiceOver or NVDA. The best one people tend to use is NVDA because that's the most popular one. Now let me open the menu. WordPress. So it's on now. Let me make sure that I'm at the top of the page. So control home. Link skip to main content. So now that we're at the top of the page, let me start tabbing through, or I can use the landmark navigation to quickly move to that landmark. So I press the D key. Banner landmark figure Kevin Geary graph. Primary navigation, navigation landmark list with eight items about visited link. So that's where we get a little issue. It says primary navigation, navigation landmark. Ideally, like I'm behind normally recommends just write primary or main rather than writing it in full primary navigation because the nav menu already tells the screen reader that it's a navigation landmark. So it will just basically be reading it multiple times, which is not nice to hear, but that's just a little thing. We can ignore that. Now let's keep going through. I think that's also a nav. So let me just press the D key again. User profile menu navigation landmark list with one item profile menu button collapsed. This is where the actual problem is. When we have a screen reader active, we can no longer access the drop down content, the space bar, the enter key, nothing works anymore because the bricks menu is set to open on hover. So that now breaks the keyboard accessibility because it's no longer listening for the enter key or the space bar key. It basically breaks. So once you press the enter key space bar, nothing works. But there's an easy fix for this, which I'll show you right now. I already mentioned it in the Web Squadron Facebook group a while ago, but I guess maybe he didn't get the memo. But basically, it all has to do with a little setting in the Bricks drop down content. So now let's go over to that. As you can see, if we go to Nicholas A's website here, 
And then let me scroll to the top. Form link skip to main YouTube. Let me just close it. Banner landmark. Okay, let me try to reduce the screen size a bit so that we can see the menus. So now with the menus, let me go to the home. Link skip to main content. Skip to footer link. Banner landmark Nick Arce logo graphic visited link. So I'll go to the nav menu now. Menu navigation landmark list with five items YouTube link. Okay, then we'll go to the drop down. Components visited link. See, says components. Then we'll get to the drop down content now. Toggle components drop down button collapsed. So now we know where the components drop down. If you press the enter key, expanded. It actually works. So he sets the right settings. So that works. Collapsed. Expanded. Collapsed. So that's just a little setting we just need to put in the bricks drop down to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and see how to do it. So let me exit NVDA. Exit NVDA dial. I've exited it, so now we'll just switch straight to the menu. All you have to do is go to your drop-down content. So let's go to one of them. And then go under the content. Then, see, toggle on, change it from hover to click or hover. So once you choose that, then that is what solves the problem for that drop-down. You have to do that for all of the drop-downs. I don't know if there's a setting directly on the nav but I didn't find it. So basically you have to go to all the drop downs, go to content, and then choose the toggle on, click or hover. So once you do that, then the menu will now start listening for the spacebar key and the enter key. So that will now make it work. So now let's save it. And when you test it on the front end, everything should ideally work. So let me use the tab key and turn on NVD again. Nike demo header. And then let me go to the top of the page. Out of list link skip to main content. And then let me quickly go to the nav menu using the landmark regions. Banner landmark, menu navigation landmark list with five items new and featured visited link. So that's the first one. New and featured submenu button collapsed. So that's the submenu button. So let me press enter. Expanded, collapsed, expanded, collapsed. So it works. So you just have to set it that it opens on hover or click. So yeah, those are the three common issues that I find with a lot of Bricks websites and I've shown how to fix them. So if any of those things were found in your own website, please leave in the comments that the solution helped you out. And please always try to do those five tests on your website if possible. So start with the visual test where you go through the entire website and then just using your mouse and visually looking at the website, can I easily find out what are links and what are not links, what are buttons, where the different things are on the page then you do an automated test using things like wave dev tools axe dev tools and so many other tools there which i will link to in the description then once you've gone through those tests you can now go over and do a keyboard test so go and try to use the tab key try to use the input keys to see if you can fill out forms on your website if you can open the navigation and things like that. So once you're done with the keyboard test, zoom in to 400% on your website and try with the keyboard again to see if you can actually access all of the information on the website without anything missing. If you're satisfied with that, you can test on a couple of mobile phones. So you always try to do with different browsers, test with your Safari, your Firefox, and your Chrome browser. Those are three basic browsers you should test with. And then also on your mobile phone, your mobile Safari, mo mobile Chrome, and mobile Firefox to make sure you have covered all the bases. And once you're done with that, you can now hand it over to a couple of experts in the field. So you can go to your Bricks uh, community or your inner circle or wherever you want to go to and try to ask them to go and review your website again. And that should give you a better understanding of your website to make sure that the website is great. And yeah, that's it. So I hope this video has helped you. If it has, please leave a like, put a thumbs up and write in the comments that it helped you out and I'll see you in the next one.